All right, can you name three character traits you admire Whoa. the most? Whoa, I answered the last question. It's your turn. Wait, what? I answered the last question. Girl, ask the question. <laughs> Three character traits. I know it's a lot, but just three, okay? Three with it. You is kind. <laughs> you is smart. <laughs> you is important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, all right. So, three character traits I admire the most about you. I love that you are a hardworking queen. You know, whenever you set your mind to do something, you do it, you um, do it with your whole heart. You are very passionate about the things that you do. You're passionate about this family. Um, you're passionate about our marriage. Uh, and third thing I would say is I admire your strength. You are a very strong woman of God. You know how to hold things together, uh, keep things together, and be the rock and the foundation, part of the foundation, because Jesus is our rock. Ha! Hey, boy. And he is our foundation. With you you. With the wait. Hit him with the phone. <laughs> is it got a phone? Or the phone? Anyway, Which but one? um, I don't know. We old, but <laughs> what up with your kids? But um, I love that about you. You're strong. You're beautiful. You're, you're a beautiful black queen. Um, regardless of what Marcus Smith said about you. <laughs> and my children. They do not believe that <laughs> So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us for week two. <laughs> we are in week two of our um, of our Love Month series. We are very excited to have Mike and Meg Gleesner on this week. They are a very wonderful couple. You know, I appreciate and love both of them dearly. When I um, met Meg um, at, I would say, when I was starting off, kicking off my podcasting journey, I joined the Christian Podcast Association, and she was a great help and has always been a great help, a great friend, and a great encourager. Um, and because of that, you know, I had in mind then that I wanted to do a series with her and her husband. Uh, and I thank God that we are now in our, what, seventh month with the podcast. And, you know, we are able to do something real dope and real special, especially since we're in this pandemic. There's a lot of things that's going on um, and we're not able to be with one another. But, you know, God saw fit that we can do these things and we can um, have fun with these things. So we held a virtual date night with Mike and Meg Gleesner. Um, they're out of Seattle, Washington. I don't know when we'll be able to go to Seattle, Washington one day, <laughs> but it was pretty cool that we could, um, you know, have this conversation with them. Meg shares her story. Mike shares his story. It's a beautiful story, how they how they came together. I pray that you enjoy it. I pray that you find um, yourself in their, uh, in their shoes in any way. Um, and also, please check out Meg's podcast, Letters from Home podcast, um, and please support all the things, many things that she's doing. Please support the Christian Podcasters Association, which both of us are a part of, and support my podcast, One Faith. But, <laughs> but please enjoy this episode. Uh, today we have some very special guests, uh, some very, very special guests. Um, I had met Meg through Christian Podcasters Association, um, and our first conversation, she literally poured in a lot of life and um, confidence and, and love. And I just felt the power of God through our conversation um, the entire time we spoke. Um, I walked away from that conversation feeling um, like I was ready to take on the podcasting world. And I thank God for that because she gave me a lot of confidence that I needed. Um, and from our initial conversation, um, it really birthed the What's Your Why series. Um, and the What's Your Why series was all about helping people find their purpose and helping people find their why in life. Um, Meg constantly asked me during the um, during our initial conversation, what's your why? 
um, to find your why. And as I was speaking and defining it, it was like the Lord just said, let's do this. This is going to be good. So today's uh, special guest is Mike and Matt Gleesner. Um, I am going to bring you guys on. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing very well. Thank you. And awesome. I love that series too. It's so great to hear so many of the wonderful pastors that you interviewed in that series. Yeah, it was definitely a blessing. And I was really um, just floored with the response from the pastors, from the ministers, from different ones who reached out and said they would love to be a part and love to um, just encourage and help people find their why. And it was it was a blessing, especially reaching out to um, many of them during through Christian Podcast Association. It was pretty it was pretty dope. It was pretty cool. So uh, what did you guys prepare for um, dinner tonight or for your date night? Well, we kept it pretty low key. We <laughs> prepared charcuterie with a little salami and cheese and rice crackers, which we really like. And pickles from Mike's. Always, all of the kids love pickles. We have some dill pickles and apple chips, a little bit of yogurt and LaCroix. LaCroix. Is that the lime flavored LaCroix? Yeah. And, yeah, and I've got the lemon. So oh, awesome. lemon and lime. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It would well, have been fun to bring, you know, like ribs or something, but you know, we, we went for the, the low impact. Nice. We can get all over our face while we're talking, you know. <laughs> right. But then you know, it's like five o'clock you guys time, so it's a little bit too early for ribs. Yeah. There you go. It's never too early for ribs, but it's a little too <laughs> I was born in Memphis, so yeah, ribs, right? Yeah, exactly. We're having ribs tomorrow for dinner. So. Yeah, we are. We are. We definitely. <laughs> <laughs> ribs and lead quarters. Smoke lead quarters. Oh, mm, nice. Whoa. So uh, we have uh, cauliflower. Well, what do you want to call it? Loaded cauliflower soup. Um, mm -hmm. It is. Yep. Go ahead and show it. Um, bacon. I make a name. It has bacon and um, cheese, um, some chopped chives, and um, I made it with uh, cauliflower. Um, was it vegetable stock and chicken stock? And um, what else? Uh, there's some heavy whipping cream and some cream cheese. So it actually it turned out really good. And oh. um, yeah, I'll, if anyone wants the recipe, just let me know. I'll post it. Or I'll give it to you guys. It's actually really good. Oh, I'll be hitting you up for that. <laughs> So I want to ask, um, I'm really excited to hear about your story, your love story. Um, Meg shared it with me a little bit while we were talking and, and how you guys met. And um, she shared a little bit of her testimony um, as well and, and how you helped her along the way with that. So uh, you want to jump in and, and just share how you guys met and, and how, you know, you guys fell in love with one another and, and where you are today. Well, you want me to start out? Yeah. So uh, Mike's a whopping three, three and a half years older than I am. Woo. <laughs> and I was a freshman in college and I signed up for some Bible studies. I became a Christian in high school and then all my friends went to a different school. So I'm like, I better find some Christians. And I went to a Bible study and then I went to my first prayer meeting through the Bible study and when I was there, I met this fellow named Mike Gleesner, and he was very friendly, and he said hello, and he was wearing this Hawaiian shirt. I remember the Hawaiian shirt, and I was like, wow, you know, because I grew up in California, so there's kind of like this space bubble, you know, and he was so friendly, like he just came right up to me, but I have to say in the back of my mind, I thought, I wonder if that's the one I'm going to marry. And so we, um, and I'm sure he has his, his part too, but so we went to Cal State Fullerton in Southern California. And as we were serving the Lord there, we just, we had Bible study. We had like a book table. We um, had lots of different things that we did together. And I just saw him. I saw the way he talked to people. Excuse me. I saw the way he talked to people. I saw his personality and I so enjoyed conversing with him. And he had such a heart for people and such a heart um, to, for the Lord, you know, and he was always talking about books. And and so for me, that was the thing that really stood out to me. And that was all freshman year. 
And then, um, and I just kind of got the feeling over time that he liked me. Was that true, babe? I did, yeah. <laughs> and what did you like about California me? girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I came out from uh, Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. I uh, went one year of college uh, at St. John's, which is a, a Catholic school. I grew up Catholic and then uh, moved to California because everybody wants to move to California uh, when I was uh, 19. And then, yeah, like Meg said, uh, we met, I was a couple years older than her. She was this, uh, what, teenage freshman. I was 17 yeah. when I started college. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But her faith came through really clearly. I mean, it, it, she said we met at a Christian book table, you know, where you, had, you would hand out uh, Bibles if people wanted them or, or tracts or just, just uh, sat and talked to people. Uh, about faith, the Lord, uh, troubles are having, whatever. And she just was like a go-getter, you know? I mean, she's still that, a go-getter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and of course, I thought he was super handsome, too. And <clears throat> I lived with a Christian family from our church, and he lived with a Christian family from church. And, you know, there was like a few other single women who lived there. And, um, you know, one day he, he, uh, asked me to go horseback riding and mm -hmm. we went horseback riding and I prepared a little picnic and we had the best time together just hanging out and um and then I I had a talk with a family that live with us it really they really I really looked up to them actually he's the one who ended up marrying us mm -hmm. but he said Meg you know you you could get married now if you want you know and he said you got to think about what your calling is in life. And if you want to get married, are you ready for that right now? Do you, and I really hadn't thought about it. And so I prayed my freshman year after we went on that one date and we had such a good time and it's clear we both liked each other, but I made the decision freshman year of college that I wasn't going to date anybody until my senior year, because I really felt God had called me to be a student and I was having such a good time in campus ministry. I wanted to wait. So that's, Ouch. <laughs> so, yeah, we waited for several years to, to get back, you know, into thinking about dating and, and uh, where that might lead. And that was that was a time of real reflection for me, for sure. I did I feel all the more a sense that this this girl, uh, her her love for the Lord is a big deal. And and uh, that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody who. I, you knew the Lord was a big deal to them and, and that they'd make decisions based on that. You know, there's a, a lot of things that we make decisions and based on other things. And somebody yeah. could actually, the big choices you can stop and say, you know, what, we're going to make that decision. Uh, I like how you said it in, in an interview I heard of yours just recently, you know, I'm going to do it the right way. And, and that, yeah. It, that's hard and it's you know everything in you says but no don't <laughs> but it, yeah so yeah very much we, we both had uh mentors in our lives too that you could you know would tell you straight up uh you know what's going on and and it was very helpful to to do that yes yeah, painful so, but helpful yeah and in those few years it was it was nice because in a sense it took the pressure off we got to just really enjoy each other as friends, like he came and helped my mom move, you know, my, I didn't, uh, there's a lot of drama in my, like my family just, there was a lot of brokenness, a lot of struggle and divorces and mental issues and uh, atheism and all kinds of stuff. So it was hard, but Mike, we just had a really great friendship all through college and I enjoyed him more and more, you know, we just had that friendship. So, but you can bet I was distracted staring at his handsome face during Bible study, like, dang, he is, he's really nice looking too. And I, I love that. That's a bonus. Right. <laughs> my heart in check for sure. But that commitment really helped keep me. And so then it came to January of my senior year when I said, okay, I'm ready. And I was at the door. He was ready to he was not. <laughs> Do you want to tell them what you told me when you picked me up in the car and you put a flower, he put a rose in my hair and we went out. Do you remember what you said to me? Yo te amo? 
Oh no, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> That's something they've done a little. No. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit further down the road. So <laughs> he had this pickup and uh, he picked me up and we sat in the driveway and he turned and he looked at me and this was the first kind of more serious conversation. He just looked at me and said, Meg, I love your heart for service. I, I love how you love Jesus. And I think you're beautiful. And I want to see what's behind the big green eyes and the smile. So <laughs> that's what he said to me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> pressure, right, exactly. <laughs> there was no pressure. And the thing I, I love, and I still love about Mike, we're about to have, in July, it'll be our 32nd anniversary. He's still my best friend. I still love hanging out with him. I still love talking with him. And it's a good thing he put in the vows that he, said he would listen to me because I really put that one to the test. <laughs> so no, he's very loving, a loving listening. Habit. So, so came time, uh, January senior year, and we went out a couple of times and you know, that moment when it turns from like to love, it didn't take really that long because in January we went on our first date and then in April and Mike's a serious man. He does not mince words, not serious. He's a lot of fun and loving, but I, <laughs> um, but it was mid April and we went out to this restaurant and he had a flower under his seat and he pulled it out and he said, you know, let's put this, put this in your hair. And I was like, Oh, wow. And, um, and then, um, why don't you talk about the dinner, the place you picked and when you told me, you know, so we picked a, ver a, a restaurant that was too expensive for a college student, but we <laughs> 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 looking over uh, Orange County in, in Southern California. And the nice. and one thing about smog, it makes for beautiful sunsets because of all the colors in those chemicals. It really, <laughs> and so it was beautiful. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, had dinner and and uh, I I did ask the waiter who spoke Spanish because I wanted to say I love you in Spanish to mm. confirm that I wasn't saying something stupid and right. so, <laughs> yeah when she I, she went to the restroom or something and yeah and then when she came back I I said yo te amo but I said it in a way that she wasn't sure she heard it or not and you know it was all awkward and well I can say that part so, yeah so you know I'm like it's a seafood place and I've never been to a seafood place. And so I'm sitting here and he had such manners and he was so gracious and thoughtful, just like he always was. And, and he looked at me and it's like, when you're first looking into someone's eyes, you're like, Oh, this makes you nervous, right? You feel so vulnerable. And, and, and he looked right at me and he says, Meg, I've been practicing my Spanish. And he looked me right in the eyes and he said, te amo. No. <laughs> I was a Spanish major in college, right? I was studying to be a teacher, right. uh, high school Spanish teacher. And I said, Oh, um, yeah, so um, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. Did the waiter come up or something? There was something oh, that the, happened. Yeah, the but, waiter. Yeah. No, the waiter came up and I said back to him, I just remember thinking, I should lead, I should respond how he's leading. And I said, Did you um I think he said I love you? And and I said, um, well, that's funny because because I love you too. And when I said that, so we still say that now. That's funny because I love you too. Because it's so nervous, right? When you feel so vulnerable. And yeah. <laughs> so the waiter came up right when I was saying that, and then he said, um, "But he heard Mike heard, but he wanted me to say it again, you know." And, uh, <laughs> that's right. You made her say it again. So yeah. So <laughs> I said, "What did you say, Mike?" Yeah, yeah. He said. <laughs> And I, I think I, then I think I flushed and then I was like, I'll chitter chitter. I'm like, well, you know, like uh, I said, Spanish is different. You know, like when you say, I love you, it's not like when you say, I love hot dogs, like in America, you know, like there's a, my brother, my company, and, and he's like, he's just looking at me and I was just all nervous. <laughs> and then he said, I love you again. So I, I just was like, because I was always afraid because I always really did want to get married. I was afraid. I, I'm one of those people who's like, oh, I'll probably die before I get to be married because I really want to get married. And I'll probably die before I have children because I really want to be a mom. Well, you know, eight, five grandkids later, I'm still here. God's still good. And, you know, but um, so, you know, I was so surprised that he said that. And so I went home and I just was praying and um. 
And I just, I knew at that point he was going to propose because he was a serious man who didn't mince words. And really those whole few years, I remember, I remember once I had just opened the word of God and I had, I hadn't thought about Mike for a while because I was trying to, you know, just keep the friendship. And one night I'd pray, this is uh, maybe a month or, or so before we started dating. And I opened up the word and I was studying the word and, um, and um, I, I said, Lord, what do you think of Mike? And it was right where I was in the scriptures. And I opened it up to where it said, uh, he fights the battles of the Lord. And that was the exact chapter that I was in in my time. So I knew at that time, and I, I just kept that, I treasured that in my heart, right? So that he's the one who fights the battles of the Lord and the Lord has brought him to meet me this day. Like I hadn't seen him for a while. And that night at Bible study, he came right up to me and we talked. It was just crazy. I knew God wanted me to marry Mike. So then forward to when he said, I love you. I knew he was going to propose to me. So it was really, really sweet. And um, two weeks later, he proposed. Do you want to talk about that, David? I did propose. And, you know, it, it is, you know how it is when you're you're in love, but then there's that idea of commitment and that idea of, but marriage is a different thing. That That's, and, you know, I grew up, I'm the youngest of nine, nine kids. Wow. Uh, in a Catholic family, in, in, in a small town in Minnesota, everybody had nine or 10 kids. I mean, all my friends' families were huge, you know, wow. farmers. So they, you, you learned how to work from, you know, as soon as you could walk. Um, and, and, uh, Everybody stuck together. You know, it doesn't mean they were a happy, fan, you know, or, or not dysfunctional. Or My dad later in, in when I was in high school uh, developed a real bad drinking problem, you know, mm. and nobody divorced, you know, everybody somehow stuck together, whether that was good or bad. I'm not exactly sure, but they, they had this, you know, sort of there's a lot of social pressure in a small town like that, that, you know, if you did get divorced, that would be a, a thing, you know, uh, especially back then. Uh, and uh, Meg's past and my past, I thought, wow, there's so many things that could go wrong in a in a marriage. I mean, how do you actually make it work right? You know, and uh, I do really thank the Lord for those couple of years where we um, were not pursuing each other because you really have to say, even there, what happens if some guy swoops in and takes her right when you know and. Right. and it, all this faith you have to have, you know, and cause at the end it is about that. And, and so, yeah, when we uh, went out a couple weeks after the, the nice restaurant that was uh, above our budgets uh, and we said, yeah, hey, I love you. Uh, we went to a lake and uh, we had a picnic by the lake uh, in Southern California, you know, it's sunny every day and it's beautiful. And, and so I brought a stuffed animal with me and I, uh, uh, it's on our bed in the other room. Yeah, it is. It's called yeah. Peregrina. It means, you know, the pilgrim or Feliz. It's called Feliz. Oh, yeah, Peregrina. Yeah. Peregrina. She, she speaks better Spanish than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think I think the animal is trying to say something. I want you to check. <laughs> and so I held the dog up to her and I said, look in the mouth. I think it's saying something. And there was a string. I put a dental floss to a, to a ring that was inside the mouth of the stuffed animal. I put a little hole in the animal. And, you know, so she popped out the ring and uh, I proposed to her right there. And I, I, we, we at that point said, you know, we have, I have some values, Meg, and, and, you know, I'd like to hear your values. You know, pilgrim, we're pilgrims, we're servants, we're, we're, uh, uh, absolutely given to to you know the lord first uh and that's core service is who we are and and you know heaven's our home so i i wherever i am it's going to be the lord is near me that's the most important thing you know so it was basically trying to say before i, I said will you marry me that um it won't be that, you know, we're tied down to a, you know, a nice picket fence and a nice big home and a, you know, a nice dog in the yard and three kids and all that. It, so she said, those are exactly my values. Yeah. Yeah. It was really sweet. Uh, we, you know, had a little blanket and we were by a lake in a park and he opened up the Bible and yeah, just what he shared, but he shared 
this is what I want my home to be about. And how about you? And I said, wow, that's amazing. You know, not even thinking that he might propose then, but it was so sweet. And he's still that man who opens the Bible and we talk about what our home and family is about. And um, I got this. Um, so she said, yes. I said, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we still have those values and our mission statement on our wall in our living room, the same ones the day he proposed. Yeah. Um, got those put up a couple of years ago. But so he proposed and I said, with all my heart, yes. And then he said, just one second. And I'm like, okay. So he, he, he just runs to the lake. And he drops on his knees and he lifts his arms in the air. And he says, thank you, Lord. She said, yes. Like he yelled it really loud. I yelled it pretty loud. Yeah. And then he came over and we hadn't even held hands up to that point. And then he kissed me and we held hands and embraced walking out of the park. So that was the proposal day. <laughs> it does. Like... <laughs> the perfect proposal. Right. <laughs> And then three months later, or well, one month later, I graduated from college and he had been out of college for a couple of, you know, a couple of years already and been working in um, computer science for the first time and just kind of as, with a, as an intern. And we had both been, ser he had been serving in some college ministry. So anyway, I, I had this, this home with a bunch of women that I was in charge of all summer. So I graduated in uh, from college uh, he he said, I love you in April, um, proposed two weeks later, graduated from college in June. I ran a household. He ran a household, got married in July uh, 22nd, 1989, and then got pregnant a month later. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a very yeah. busy year for us. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, and really... My when Mike got to meet my father, my father's an atheist, he lives nearby, love him. Uh, but he Mike said, Do you mind if if we give thanks for the food? We went out for dinner for the first time I met him. Yeah. So she she had never met my parents. They didn't they never knew her. And you uh, know, they always kept asking me, Mike, are you know, are you got anybody interested in, you know, I just was kind of low-key on down low on it. But uh, I had met her mom and her mom and dad were divorced, so I met her dad, we were, this was meeting the dad time and we were, I was, we were already engaged. <laughs> so we went to a Mexican restaurant and uh, just before the, when the food arrived, I said, um, do you mind if uh, uh, Megan and I get thanks for the food? Um, and uh, he said, I absolutely will not do that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And it was a very, pretty quiet dinner. He's actually also in IT uh, in, in a very, I was working for Arco at the time as an intern okay. uh, and he was working for Unical. So yeah. we we're in the same industry, you know, IT for oil companies. Yeah. But he, uh, he's like, absolutely not. And he was so offended. And of course now Mike's his favorite man in the world besides uh, his, his, my brother, Joe, but <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit of a, uh, he didn't come to our wedding. He, he refused to go. He, he actually, before we got home uh, from the restaurant, he left a message on our voicemail back in the day when he had recorders. You know, uh, he left a voicemail on the recorder and said, uh, "You know, I'm very offended by this whole thing, and I, I, I'm not coming to your wedding. I'm not doing. You know, I'm not going to be involved with any of that." So, yeah. How was that? How was navigating through that for you, Meg? Was that tough to hear? Yeah, it was hard to hear, but. It wasn't a huge surprise because really just a couple of years before that, as uh, in high school, I be I had really never been to church except for my Catholic grandmother took me when I was little and I spent a year in Tennessee when my parents had a hard time. So at 16, I really had hardly any um, background in the faith. And at 16, I went to a party through Campus Crusade. I'd met some friends at school and I gave my life to the Lord. Some friends, if you can believe it, open up the Bible at a party and share the gospel. And I gave my life to Christ and the guy gave me his Bible and I would just read it. And I would kind of, um, I thought, wow, I should tell my dad. I should tell my dad I'm a Christian. And so I, 
I said, dad, hey, I just want to talk to you about God. And he's like, there's no room in my house for God. I'm the one who pays the bills. I put the food on the table. Wow. No. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I'll tell him I'm a Christian. So I kind of hid that mm -hmm. until college when I met this Christian group in college at Cal State Fullerton that I was like, wow, these people really know the Lord. I want to know the Lord. And kind of like you, TJ, I had that background in sports. I, I actually had a full ride for volleyball. Oh, wow. Thing. But my dad said I couldn't take it because it was a Christian college. Full wow. ride, I let go and put myself through school all by myself without a penny help from my parents, which wow. I thank God for because I live with that Christian family and it all turned out to be a blessing. Anyway, my my parents, you know, divorced a lot of different relationships and stuff. But so anyway, when I started walking with the Lord and really growing in my faith freshman year, I was invited to church. I went, I loved it. And then I went to my dad and said, dad, I'd really like to go to church. And he was so upset. And he said, you can go once, but if you want to go again, you are not welcome to live in my house. So he actually I went to church and I was like, are you kidding me? This is so cool. People are sharing God's word. You know, people are singing. It was such a, a beautiful place in time. And I knew that I had to tell him that. So I told my dad and then he said, you are not welcome to live here anymore. You have to find another place to live because I was a Christian. He kicked me out of the house. He wouldn't let me take advantage of my sisters. So that's kind of how my face started out. So it wasn't super surprising when my dad refused to uh, he said he wouldn't give me away, but to see my my brother who had fallen on hard times and now he's walking with the Lord, to see him walk me down the aisle was pretty special. Wow, that, yeah. it's it's kind of like a full circle moment a little bit. It's like you you see the struggles and for him to come around and and step in that place. You know, I know it it, it really resonated a lot with you. Now, Mike, how did you um, you know deal with you know that? negativity i would say in a sense i was pretty shocked i mean honestly i i, I was never heard of somebody that would be that vehemently against just the you know idea of giving thanks for food uh uh or that that we would give thanks for food and, and but it it uh, was a good start if we're gonna have that kind of uh a relationship it's nice to just get it on the table and be really clear where people are at exactly and uh it, Somewhere in that journey, uh, Meg's mom came to a to a ministry meeting that we were having. Uh, I think even before we were engaged, it was a tent meeting. Yeah, it was a tent meeting. We used to set up a tent in, 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 in the park and put big banners up. And you know, I was in a Christian band. I played keyboard, and uh, she came and she got saved at the event. You know, I mean, she clearly gave her life to Christ, and and um, so to have her dad be so much the opposite of what had happened with her mom. Uh, we, we really, it made you say he is still a pre-Christian, you know, there's still, we're, we're going to see him <laughs> come around. And uh, yeah. it was hard after our first child was born, you know, Meg said that she was pregnant, you know, pretty soon after our marriage. And um, that's when the thaw started happening, really. I mean, it was a very slow thaw, but at least, it was like the first conversation we had had in a, since that, like a year. Uh, and uh, it's progressively changed over the years. And that, that's not part of our love story, but it is part of our love story because it's our family. Yeah. And, and in the end, him moving into our house because he had just fallen on hard times, lost his job, had difficulty with his marriage. And so, you know, we offer, we'd always offered, if you, you need a place, we're not going to have you, you know, homeless. You can stay with us. Yeah. Eventually he took us up on it, you know, and we, we told them we're not changing anything with you being here. You know, we're still going to sing Christian songs before dinner and give thanks for our food. And <laughs> cause it's our house. Uh, yeah. And he said, I would expect that it's your house, but I can tell you. So this was just three years ago when that happened, you talk about, a full circle you know he mm -hmm. he came and he's he's been he's he's one of those guys who's always kind of shaking his fist at god i jesus is my brother ah ha ha and uh when when he moved into our home within 24 hours just seeing the love of the kids and he he's loved the kids over the years and he's regretted not going to our wedding but he it, you know i just think he hadn't been in that environment it just melted away so much 
yeah. so much of that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. It's funny because like, I know I've dealt with atheists before and um, uh, sadly one atheist that I do know uh, took his own life, but it's, it's kind of like you have to be extra sensitive to, to, to people like that because you don't want to come off too strong and too hard, but at the same time, you want to give everybody or, you know, give them their own, you know, lane to really come to Christ on their own. It's kind of like how we all come to Christ on our own. We yeah. have really it, it takes a, it takes us having those moments, those God moments that really shows, you know, just who he is and his love for us. And I, um, it sounds like to me, like from him moving in with you guys, just he he was able to witness more of the love of Christ, you know, just flowing within your family. Um Ah, man, that's 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 really that's really powerful. To be honest with you, that's really powerful. Um, do you have any questions what, or anything on your mind? Uh, what's the reason for him being an atheist? Is it something that happened before? Or he just never really believed. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, he he went to a Catholic college, and see, his dad kind of abandoned his family when he was growing up. So, you know, there are some things we all have a story, right? Something happened. Christian Brothers in Memphis. Tennessee yeah, where, yeah. Christian Brothers College and he had questions for his professors and they had no answers and I think that made him so upset that they had no answers he just thought it was a bunch of propaganda mm. BS and then I think when he married got my mom pregnant after he had been had like this terrible accident and he recovered and they, they just had a loveless marriage and then he had to move to California from Tennessee to get a job it was so hard on him. I have a feeling he just turned to alcohol for mm. his loneliness. My mom went internal. He also was physically didn't treat her well. So mm. it it is a lot. And at one point, you know, you know, there's those people that are so upset that I just remember that he's a tender boy inside. You know, he's we all he was, you know, my grandmother was precious and he's just been this kind of heart hardened fellow. He told me at one point, he said, you know, Meg, I really hate Christians, but there's nothing I hate more than born again, evangelical Christians. And I'm like, oh, this is my dad. <laughs> and he didn't even remember the name of our son when he came to visit it. Cause uh, a year after our marriage, you know, a year and a half, we got sent up to Seattle to plant a church, which is, has been um, great. But so when my dad finally came to visit and he had so, he and my stepmom were a lot of money they could have traveled. He, it was our fourth kid was born, and um, he said, "So what'd you have again?" I said, "A boy, Dad, your first grandson." You know, like that's how disconnected he was. They, you know, I love them. I love my Dad, my stepmom. They just lived kind of the American dream life, just for themselves for a lot of years. So to have it be where he, you know, they ended up on hard times and divorced and not having anything left it was really sad. You don't want to see anyone like that. And, and we've loved them over the years. You learn to appreciate people. You can either let yourself get all disappointed, right? Or you can say, you know what, that's who they are. And I'm going to love them as them and accept that, especially if it's our parents, you know, and not just wish that I had a different parent, but just love him for who he is. Mm -hmm. And over time, he loves us both so much. It's really sweet, but we're still praying for him. Like Mike said. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's like what the Bible says, you know, honor your mother and your father. Um, yeah. It's, and when you have, you know, hard father or hard parents to deal with, you still have to honor them. You still yeah. have to love them. You still have to respect them because that's how Christ would do with us. You know, we are imperfect. He still loves us and, and honors us and still sent his son to down the cross for us. And so we have to reflect that same love towards people who even our own parents or family members who don't necessarily agree with our faith or our beliefs or anything like that. So. Yeah, and, and so he, we did ask him when he moved in uh, about, you know, not showing up at our wedding, not not because we wanted to, you know, resolve any bitterness or anything, but just to just say, you know, what did you think of that or why, why, what was really going on there? And uh, he said something that I had to apologize to him for, which was, you know, you never asked me my opinion about you even marrying my daughter. Regardless of you know, him, being, you know, kicking her out of the house and you know saying Not I don't want speaking to me yeah. for years, <laughs> but that's absolutely true. Uh, that was my bad. You know, I I, I shouldn't talk to you about your daughter. You know, so you know, he forgave me. He actually, I don't even know if he said those. Words. I said, "Will you please forgive me?" And 
I don't, maybe he said, oh, you know, but <laughs> it, it, it struck me. It struck me that he felt wrong, wrong. You know, it's, it's amazing. The first question I'll ask, that's a pretty good one, is what are ways that you have grown and changed in the last year? What areas do you see positive changes in your spouse? Hmm. And these are not the ones that you have to write down. No, we're just okay. going <laughs> to just answer them. So both how we've changed ourselves. Um, how we've changed yeah, so ourselves. What are ways that you have grown and changed in the last year? And what areas do you see positive changes in your spouse? All right. Well, Go ahead. I'll start. So this year has been a crazy year as far as 2020 and all the things. And I've just been podcasting an adventure, just stepping into all these doors that have been unknown, you know, and I don't know, you know, and I've seen God just open up so many doors and blessings. And I think just stepping out in faith like that, Mike has been so encouraging and so supportive. Even the other day I was editing late and I feel, I'm like, I need to hurry up and finish editing so I can get back out to the family. And he looked at me and said, Meg, you are serving the family. We are in this together. It is a family mission. So I think with this year, you know, it's been a, a year of me because I've been a, a stay at home mom all these years. I've nannied here and there, but just really in, investing in something brand new and seeing God from doing the podcast together, you know, we do bonus episodes and Mike speaks and does a teaching moment on there. And it's, I feel so honored to have him on there. I just, I think this year, the way I've changed is I've just stepped out into, and I can be a fearful person, but just to see God come through and how, you know, I've seen Mike change is that he is so steady and so grounded in his values and in his love and the way he has helped every single, you know, we have eight kids and some of them are in Canada. One one of our daughters was, her daughter was visiting her, her dad because uh, Javi's married, but her daughter's dad is in a different state and she had to be racing with the last flight out of town to make it before COVID. There's been a lot of things come up within the family and to see Mike, um, to see you, babe, lovingly be there for every one of our children, for every person coming back home, for every trial. He is that steady, loving force sitting there with his open Bible every day, calm, loving, steady. So I think I've seen I've seen that only strengthen this year. So I love wow. it. <laughs> How do you live up to that? <laughs> what you do? I'm not crying yet. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so um, I think for me, change uh, this year has been, it's almost like what hasn't changed. Um, in, in, in February, I actually made a big step in my career. I'd always stayed away from executive management because I thought that would take away from the family, take away from ministry. You get too far up the ladder and you get too distracted and, you know, yeah. consumed. Uh, but now it's just two kids at home and they're both in high school. Uh, Meg and I prayed about it and we said, okay, um, I'm going to really shoot for being a VP, you know? So in February, I became a, v a vice president of the financial institution I'm at. at and uh, it's, it's been wonderful. It's been, it's, it's, I've been able to maintain the uh, commitments, you know, not shed things and make, you know, make that career be uh, mm -hmm. more than it should be. Uh, so that's and that's changed my thinking on a lot of things where you can actually look at those types of situations as as um, opportunities in a big way. You can really, you know, you can use those situations for uh, changing people's lives uh, in a big way. And I've always looked at work as a ministry opportunity, but th yeah. it's another level. Mm -hmm. and, and for our marriage and for Meg, uh, clearly the podcasting has opened up a whole new uh, uh, light for her in terms of, of, you know, being able to share with people across the country, not just across the country, but across the world. I know she's interviewed people from Jordan, Middle East, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, and, and uh, really to, to have fellowship and uh, uh, encourage one another in your faith. It's, it's been awesome. 
Yeah, and, and one of the early values in our home is that our home would be used to bless the world. Mm -hmm. And who would think during COVID when the time where we're all shut in and in Seattle, it's locked down. Like for it feels like we've been locked down for a year. It, yeah. It's close where we've hardly gone anywhere. And yet God has still used our home to honor the values of a young Mike and Meg to bless the world. We've gotten to know neighbors. We were bringing Christmas gifts to this uh, cerebral palsy home across the street. It's crazy. We've had some unique opportunities that we haven't all had, you know, for a few years. So it's cool. We used to lead a life group. And with the, you know, the pandemic, it's just, we, we said it's it's too hard to do this on Zoom. Uh, the, our worship and church meetings are all on Zoom, you know, just or uh, or just on YouTube, you know, they're recorded. So it, it, it definitely it's great to have these kinds of new these new situations that the Lord raises up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know for us. Well, I, I'm speaking for myself. I don't speak for you because you know you have your own thoughts. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I know for me, what ways that I've grown and changed in the last year, um, similar to what you said, Meg, like with 2020 and everything kind of being shut down and and things kind of shifting the way it has shifted. Um, I've seen how the Lord has really grown me over the last year to or really elevate me, uh, elevate my confidence in being able to do things like this. Um, prior to I was like, prior to 2020, I would not be I wasn't doing anything remotely close to this. Um, I had thoughts, dreams, um, visions of doing this type of stuff. But I was always scared to do it because I felt like I was um, in the shadow of a giant and, and couldn't really move outside of it. And so when I got to the place where I would say 2020 happened or, or and we're shut down and we're all kind of quarantined, it really made me kind of reflect and look at myself and, and look at some of the things that I've always said I wanted to do and just take that leap and do it. Um, and for me, that's where I feel like I've grown a lot. I've, I've grown in confidence and just doing the things that, you know, I've always wanted to do. I feel like God has given me and blessed me with the ability to do it and just having that confidence to just actually do it. Um, and in areas that I've seen like positive changes in my wife, um, I've seen her just grow um, immensely spiritually. Uh, it's funny when we first moved down here, um, when we moved to our um, our her uncle, her uncle's church, <laughs> he uh, I, we I, we prayed one time in the house and um, the spirit really fell and, and she got caught up in the prayer and it, it, it resonated with me. And I was like, man, she's a prayer warrior. Uh -huh. And I remember just telling her uncle, I was like, your, your niece is a prayer warrior. Like she can really pray. She can really go. And I've known that for a while because, you know, when she would pray before and everything, she would, you know, the, the spirit of God would really come over her and she would really um, take forth. And so I remember having a conversation with her uncle and because he was trying to figure out ways to, you know, how he can really fit me in and, and do things in the church. Um, and I just mentioned to him, I was like, you know, your niece is a prayer warrior. So if you need anybody to pray on Tuesday nights, we have Tuesday night prayers, prayer service was like, you know, definitely if she's there, just have her pray. And lo and behold, <laughs> one Tuesday night, he <laughs> gave her the microphone and she just started praying. And ever since then, he just been just going crazy about her <laughs> and how she prays and how the spirit of the Lord is just moving on her. And for me, I saw it ha as... Um, her faith being really increasing in that area because of some of the things we went through last year and a lot of the struggles that we faced. And mm -hmm. as we faced them together, you know, and I, I've seen how she increased her prayer life, how she increased her faith and how she increased a lot of the things that she was doing. Um, I've seen that growth and change in her um, and just not just with her faith, but with her confidence in, in who she is. Um, I know there are days when she don't feel as as confident and things like that, but I know that she 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 works hard to 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 be confident and and to show that she is definitely a beautiful individual, whether she tried to or not. And she's pregnant, so she might start crying. Yeah. <laughs> she has that glow about her face, that's for sure. All right. 
so I, I've noticed some things that she's grown over the year and and seen how she's just been an excellent uh, mother and um, a great wife. And, you know, I feel like just being shut in has helped us really grow closer together um, and kind of block out a lot of the, the noise and the things that were going on outside and just really focus on us. So, David? Well, I'll keep my answer short because I'm not much of a talker. Yeah. <laughs> He's a talker. I'm the listener. <laughs> but um, I would say that I've grown. Um, I am more able or more flexible with sharing my time with him. <laughs> Very. Uh, <laughs> I um, I just enjoy slim- simplicity. Um just him going to work and coming home and then it's all about me. We watch TV together. We <laughs> <laughs> relax, you know, that's just me. But it hasn't been like that this year at all because of the podcasting and, you know, things with the church and just him being in ministry. It's like I'm sharing him with everyone now. So, <laughs> you know, it was a little hard to adjust to at first and I'm still kind of trying to adjust <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I, I want to say something to him, but he's on the phone talking to somebody else about, you know, the podcast or whatever, and, and I don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> so I become more understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I, I've grown in that way. <clears throat> and the positive change. Um, and TJ, I've, he's forever changing positively. Um he's always striving to do his best and it's not his best for himself. It's always his best for God and for us as a family. So I think he sees that every year. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Every year. That's that's so cute. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Now it's game time. (laughs) So my wife will ask um, some questions. Uh, what you will do is you will we can speak. Yeah. Well, it's pretty <laughs> much how well do you know your spouse? So I'm going to ask um, Meg a question um, about Mike. You have to write down what you think Mike would answer yep. to. So Mike, you also write down your answer to the question, okay? And then you both will show okay. it. Okay? okay? And then we'll take turns like that. Okay, yep. so this question is for Mike, actually. Ooh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what will you say is your wife's uh, dream vacation? Ooh, dream vacation. Um, a location or just activities? Either one. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a lot of words there, babe. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to find a Spanish word for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do I show it now or? Yeah, if you're ready. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Are you ready, man? Yep. Can you see that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably going to be wrong, but. Yeah. <laughs> Dream vacation? Um. Well, I would probably just say visiting on my kids, but if it's with us, I guess Europe. 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 Is there a word? Would work. That would work. Hotels in Europe. <laughs> they have hot tubs. He said he said hot tub. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, if we went to Europe and we had a hotel a that didn't have a hot tub, that would be <laughs> Yeah, it would be off the list. Just kidding. I do yeah. love a hot tub. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Meg. What is your husband's favorite season of the year? Uh, oh, okay. I would guess autumn, fall. Yeah, oh, she got it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's her turn bell, yeah. <laughs> we had eight kids, you needed it, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, we might need to invest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mike. What is your wife's favorite food or dish? 
Hmm. You, you have to tell me if you guys are into this too. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it's what I told you earlier, but nachos. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Load it down with uh, yeah, not <laughs> yep. Um, what does your husband look forward to do on the weekends? Okay. I'm sorry, okay. Okay. I got it. We see it. Okay, baby. <laughs> My first answer would be sleep because, of, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I think, I think, uh. <laughs> It used to be watching Saturday morning cartoons with the kids. That was a big deal. It's a weekend activity. Yeah, yeah. weekend activity. Uh, I do like gardening. Mm. Yeah. But she's not going to say that. What would I say? You would say... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have to think like me. <laughs> <laughs> I would make think I think... My favorite weekend activity. What's your favorite activity every day? Babe? Uh, every day, what do you love to do? It's the best part of your day. What do we say in our highs and lows every night when we talk with the family? Oh, you sitting in the hot tub with the kids? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's close to the same thing. <laughs> we out with the family, babe. It's true. That's that's so that Saturday morning cartoons with the family was was yeah. true too. Yeah. Even as an adult, when Mike went back to get his MBA, uh, you know, he was in the living room in our house, always hanging with the family. He didn't go somewhere to study. He stayed right there with kids climbing all over him, sitting there studying. He loves family. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And great focus, because <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna hold them to that gardening one. I'm gonna bring that one up next week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are this is for Mike. Does your spouse prefer uh, sweet or savory foods? Sweet or savory? That's like there's not even a question. <laughs> I didn't write it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet foods. I I, sweet. I just have to say it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right yeah. there on that one. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a big sweets person. We forgot that out of the love well, you story. You had to let me say that because now well, we might not get the point for that. Well, we, we we definitely get the point because when we were before we were even engaged or anything, we told you we were you know uh, she would always bring me treats. <laughs> so I, yeah. <laughs> So it hasn't been good to our waistline, but we we love <laughs> way back in the day, yeah. So. Yeah, same. same here. <laughs> All right, and Meg, what is your spouse's favorite movie to watch? Can you see it? Oh yeah. Okay. All right, Lord of the Rings. Yep, she got it right. <laughs> Mostly because, um. yeah, <laughs> her three sons love it. I mean, they love it. So we about every weekend we pull out one of the. Well, Lord on of the New Rings. Year's we yeah. watched the whole set. right at midnight when it says. Oh yeah. What's oh, the you, you hit it. Right? it clock hit. Yeah, and, and so it begins. So, <laughs> if you start the movie like at ten fifty. You get to Thayden and saying that line right at midnight yeah. at New Year's, and so it begins. I smell nerd in here. So do you. It's there. Yeah, yeah we got it. We, we didn't do that this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 